Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another video? This is another paid request. This time it is for Nate. They do so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, uh, commenters, reviews, re reviews, what have you, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box, pretty much under any of these videos. Now, Nate wanted me to talk about Meet the Feebles from 1989 the second film by Peter Jackson who had done Bad Taste, he would go on to do The Frighteners and of course The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit trilogies. Team Khan in 2005 I much prefer the Peter Jackson who did Dead Alive, who did this movie, who did Bad Taste, who did The Frighteners. That's more my preference for Peter Jackson because the stuff after The Frighteners I'm not a fan of. It's cool if you are, I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy, I'm not a Hobbit guy. Uh, I don't even like his Team Con. I prefer the original 1930s Team Con. I prefer Con Store Island. I prefer those Team Con films more than the Team Con where he dances on the ice capades and is ready to stick Naomi Watts up his Hershey Highway. I don't care about that Team Con movie. It's over long, it takes a whole damn hour just to get to the island. Whatever. Adrian Brody's given nothing to do, especially at the end. <laughs> I, anyway, go off that tangent. If you like the film, cool. We agree to disagree. Meet the Feebles. I remember seeing, I actually have a DVD of it. I could not find the case, but I got the disc. That's how I watched it at the end. Um, it was from, funny enough, a company called Dead Alive Productions. I say funny because, of course, Peter Jackson. A film he did after this was Dead Alive, also known as Brain Dead, but in the U.S. it was called Dead Alive, which I also love. And uh, I think that Blu-ray for that film is out of print, at least the uncut version. Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles have never been on Blu-ray, from what I understand. And then Peter Jackson kept talking about, oh yeah, one day I'm going to do this, going to do that, and none of that ever came to be. It's like James Cameron talking about The Abyss and True Lies. That hasn't come to be, still yet to this day. No meet the feebles, no bad taste. No. So I don't know what the hell they're waiting for. I don't know, maybe for the 8K generation. How the hell should I know? But it was around, I want to say, 2005 or 2004. I was in San Marcos, Texas, and I was going around town, and I went, entered this random shop, and it had this DVD, and it's Meet the Feebles. I'm like, what the hell is that? It's Muppets on Acid. I went, okay, <laughs> that intrigues me, because that seems very different and unique. The Muppets, if they were on acid, and there's the whole movie, it's R-rated, and it's about puppets. Got the DVD, and enjoyed it. I like how the cinematography is a bit grittier, like behind the scenes of this variety show. Like this is how you do it on like the Happy Land. What the fuck? Happy Town. Happy. The the one with Melissa McCarthy. I already forgot what the are these Happy Land, Happy Town murders, Happy Time, Happy Time. Well, that shows how much I remember that movie. I can't remember the damn title. The one with Melissa McCarthy teamed up with a puppet. It's like a cop show. And uh, the jokes are, okay, the jizz of this puppet is silly string. And that goes on for like three minutes. Here, it's a lot grosser. It's a lot more vile in terms of that type of stuff. But at the same time, it feels a bit smarter. It feels a bit wittier about show business and... How this variety show has all these dark secrets in between of sex and drugs and all that stuff. It feels... doesn't feel neutered. It doesn't feel clean. Like, again, the, the way the, it looks and the way it's shot. Maybe just because that's how a lot of 80s movies were shot in a good way. And I'll quick note the DVD. I remember it seemed like a cheaper... DVD production of a company because I'd never heard of that company, Dead Alive Productions. I don't even know what else they had done. I remember they had a lot of trailers. 
like you clicked on the trailer and there were films like in the woods there was a film called Dahmer like Jeffrey Dahmer the secret life or the secret life of Jeffrey Dahmer and it stars I think Carl Crew well one of the guys from Blood Diner as Jeffrey Dahmer <coughs> there was not the one with Clint Howard but there's another one called Mr. Ice Cream Man which had the music from Aliens, like Bishop's Countdown. And this is like this really low budget, shot on shitio, like Mr. Ice Cream Man. Did yeah, not the one with Clint Howard, this is a different one. So, it, I don't know, those trailers stick out to me for some reason. Maybe just back to the day, I did watch this quite a few times because they were just so, this is so unique. And I actually like the puppetry work. I thought for this type of film is rather efficient. You have a different variety of animals. You got the lead singer of this variety show that are hoping to get ready for the prime time, the bid time. So you have Heidi, who's this hippo, who's a singer, but she overeats. You have her husband, this walrus, but the walrus cheats on her with this little Siamese cat. Who either he fucks or gives him a blowjob. Uh, you have the new innocent worker after this hedgehog named Robert who falls in love with Lucille, this poodle. You have this nice like, worm called Arthur who's been at this production for quite a while. You have this elephant who's in a pregnancy case with this chicken. It's a paternity case. Uh, you have this fraud who's a druggy and is a Vietnam vet and there's a whole section as a Vietnam flashback is a straight up take on the deer hunter with the played Russian roulette and the, like again the way the puppetry work is done I don't think it looks that cheap like what other reviewers are saying I think it works for its and the fact there's no humans in it I mean I guess technically there's a human but it's still a human in a puppet form so, but there's no actual live action people in it. I thought that was the right decision. Because it made you escape into this world where everything's a puppet. and this. And it's one of those things where you didn't quite know what would happen next. And it would go for the fences and it would not hold back and... It was this kind of crazy curiosity. Oh, okay, here's a rabbit who's like the MC or, or whatever, and he's sexually promiscuous, and he's got a possible STD, but then there's something else to it. You have this rat that works with the walrus, and he's got this background where he's filming uh, porn, and you got drug deals going on, and some drugs are bad, and one punishes the other, and the one puppet melted to a puddle of mess. It was a damn uh, machine gun massacre where Heidi finds out what's going on with her husband and is so psycholog psychologically damaged she goes on a rampage with a damn machine gun she stole from Rambo in First Blood. <laughs> I just, I kind of sit here and I go, why is it that this film works? But that Melissa McCarthy film did not work. I think number one, it's more fully committed to its insanity. And it's more, I don't want to use the words daring and other stuff, but it's just more it's less eye rolling. Like the Melissa McCarthy film is yeah, look how raunchy we are, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, this really raunchy. Do we need your approval yet? This is a movie that doesn't seem like seeking your approval. It's just these are the characters and they're rowdy and raunchy and all these little puppets have their own backstory. Uh, yeah, like the one like I said, the fraud has his own Vietnam flashback. And like a full story is told. Like this one Sergeant Rock looking fraud that saved one of saved him, but then when he tried to return the favor, he just ran off. And oh, that's why he's so drugged down, that's why he's so 
uh, scared and afraid, and that's why he wants to escape through drugs, or the little love story between Robert and Lucille, or the whole thing with Heidi, and you see a flashback. Like, you get little bits of the history of these characters. Like, you see a flashback to where Heidi first met this Wallace character, and she was thinner, and now she's bigger, and how some people, like, made fun of her and her size, and that gets to her. And, like, he's given a satire of behind the scenes of a show that it could all be funny games, but the, in the back is a lot seedier than you think. But you really felt the, the seediness and grittiness of it all. The, the Happy Time Murders, I think that's what it was called. You, you st it felt like still a studio film. So even though it tried to be dirty, it still wasn't dirty. It still felt a bit slick. It still felt a bit clean. And I remember not even hating that film as much as others, but I remember being disappointed. Just like, oh wow, this is like a return the meet the feeble type of category, but nothing in that film was as shocking as what you would see in this movie. So that movie, Melissa McCarthy, just felt a lot tamer. Plus, you know, Melissa McCarthy was not really the funniest lady. I mean, I like the heat, but I like that more for Sandra Bullock, not for Melissa McCarthy. I didn't mind Spy, that movie, but I'm going off tangent. It was just cool to see how the puppetry work, and you just see that it must have taken a lot of damn hard work. And the way the way it made each of the face, like the eyes blink, or the how the mouths work. And a variety of different animals. Even during the drug deal, there's this one giant spider that grabs one of them and eats them, and... It goes at a good enough pace. I don't think it was boring. And... It's kind of a weird movie to try to describe. You just have to sort of see it to believe it. Like I said, the variety show, it's it has a catchy theme song. Meet the Feebles. Meet the Feebles. I remember seeing it thinking, wow, this is very unique. This is very original. I did. It's like taking the Muppets, but if behind the scenes was all these stories you hear about other shows where it's seedy or it's rowdy or it's raunchy or it's not as clean as you think it is. And it pretty much all takes place in the same day because it's only a few hours. I forget how many hours until they go into a a full production to hopefully get this big TV nationwide deal. And like I said, it doesn't hold back. I mean, there is like an anteater that I swear is jizz coming out of his damn nose. It's when Heidi goes on the massacre. I mean, that's where the Peter Jackson door comes in. They use him bad taste and later in Dead Alive since he puppets blown apart. Or... She, shot through the mouth and out of the head or just going absolutely ape shit. And yeah, if you're not I'm not usually into that type of stuff, but I guess the whole thing with the puppetry and the, the way it was done for some reason it didn't bother me as much. I can't quite understand myself, but I guess it was just In a way, it didn't feel like you were just doing it for shock. It is doing it for just shock sake. But to say, but it just felt like, okay, well, this is just how these folks live, and this is just how decadent they are compared to then the innocence of Robert and Lucille and, and Arthur and those characters, which are the few that live. I mean, okay, well, that's why they live. <laughs> I mean, spoilers, not everything works. There's this fox that is so adamant to get the sun on the, the air on the show, and the walrus is like, no, you're not doing it. And when the fox thinks everything's going haywire, he sings the song about sodomy. I'm like, okay. Like, 
I don't know, I just didn't really give a shit about that character or about that song or anything in between. Um, yeah, I didn't really care about him. That whole thing I think could have been cut out. Heidi, I think, and Rutgers Bet should have died at the end. Because, okay, she you feel sorry for her because of what she goes through, but she also kills some innocent puppets, too. She doesn't just kill the guilty ones. If she just killed the guilty ones, I can understand. But she, she also kills quite a few innocent ones, too. And I did. She, she went insane. So it just... She's imagining all these people making fun of her, but we then see that it's in her head. But at the same time, with so many innocent people, it's like, okay, she gets punished, she goes to jail, but then... Oh, she's now working as a supermarket, and uh, I don't know, I still think she should have, either she should have died, and there'd be like a, like a puppet heaven, maybe, they could have some stuff in there, or, I did either, she kills the guilty ones, and that's where the master is a part of it, or, she's got to pay for what she did, and, uh, Go out in a blaze of glory. I, I don't know. But other than that, I don't really have much issues with it. Like I said, if you've never seen or even heard of the film, uh, you're in for a... That's why, you know, so many movies today, they try to push, oh, what the fuck quality. I'm like, I've seen Meet the Feebles. I've seen some what the fuck movies, so... But this one at least is entertaining. Uh... It, likeable characters. I liked Robert as little, I don't want to say lisp, but, but a little bit of a Elmer Fudd type of quality to his voice. He can't say his R's. His R's, he says, is his W's. My name is Wobbit. I get Arthur the Worm. Seems like a good old cheerio type of gentleman. Uh, at least in this, you have some characters you could root for, you could like, and have a certain like innocence quality to it. I think also with like, the Happy Timers, like it tries to be a cop show, a cop film, but then like the action and stuff is really up to par. Like I said, Melissa McCarthy could get on your nerves a bit, and uh, like I said, this really went for the fences, and you saw it, and you felt it, and you just kind of take it aback by how far they went. But there was actually a story being told. Like, say, each of the other tears. Maybe that's another reason why I could deal with the shot value stuff. Is like, there's still little stories being told. Like I mentioned with the Vietnam vet, there's a, there was a full story of that. Say with the the hippo, everything else. Which is weird to say that out loud. But yeah, if you've never seen Meet the Feebles, I'm not going to give everything away. Leave some room for you to find out for yourself. It is on YouTube for free. You just type in Meet the Feebles. There, it is on YouTube for free. Because who knows when the hell this will ever get an actual Blu-ray. Well, I've seen weirder things get 4Ks. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Peter Jackson, he's too busy. I don't know what the hell he's doing now. Another Hobbit trilogy? I don't fucking know. But, yeah, Peter Jackson, I wish he would go back to these type of films. But I'm sure he feels he outgrew them. Who knows if he even likes these older films? He may be like, eh, they're beneath me. You never know. Kind of like Jamie, Cur Jamie Lee Curtis when she talked about, you know, those slasher films she did. Oh, they all suck. I'm like, no, you suck, Jamie Lee Curtis, you old twat. But, either way, Meet the Feebles, definitely a thumbs up for me. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.